Hello everybody, my name is Mei Lung and welcome back uh, from our first video on getting started with Tableau as well as connecting to data. In this video, we will focus on how to create visualizations. As a quick refresher from the last video, once you've connected your data, uh, the fields have been categorized into dimensions and measures. Measures itself are uh, your metrics and uh, numerical figures, which you could typically uh, plot on an axis. These are the things that you're really interested in analyzing. Whereas dimensions are categories or ways that you would want to be able to slice and dice your data by. These are characteristics uh, such as um, the category of goods, the customers, the uh, salespeople who have sold it, the stores, etc. Within Tableau, visualizations are created on worksheets. Each worksheet allows you to create one visualization. To add more worksheets, you can select this icon across the bottom or right click and create a new worksheet. Although each worksheet only uh, allows you to house one visualization, when we move on to create interactive dashboards, you are able to add more than one visualization together. We will revisit this in our dashboard video. Before we get started, let's just take a look at uh, the worksheet itself and the different areas uh, within a worksheet. By now, you should be familiar with the data panel, which is on the left. It lists all of the fields uh, that you are able to create visualizations with. Across the top in the columns and rows are uh, areas that we call shelves. This entire area is actually uh, where you would create your visualizations and all of these different areas allows you to drag and drop your dimensions and measures into to customize the visual that you have in mind. So before we get started, let's just take a look at the layout of a worksheet. It is very easy to create data visualizations uh, within Tableau. For the most part, you can uh, drag and drop uh, your fields uh, that are available to you in each of these areas. What I have uh, here is the columns and rows shelves. This uh, allows you to uh, slice and dice the data um, either uh, horizontally or vertically. Uh, the plotting area is also a, a very common area to get started. Uh, this is where your visualization will appear. So um, you can also drag and drop uh, visualizations directly into uh, the visual itself to create uh, different layers. The marks, uh, area allows you to select you know what are the type of markers that you are working with so whether it's a bar a line a square a circle or a map uh, there are also a lot of different options as well uh, these card areas is where you can uh, determine uh, what uh, the colors are um, what are you sizing your markers by etc pages the filters allow you to create uh, customized filtering for your users, whereas Pages allows you to create uh, almost video-like visualizations where it plays back um, the same visual, but uh, over time or over different categories, depending on what it is that you set the pages to be based on. Now, there are very, very many ways to create uh, visualizations at the worksheet level. One visualization can be created in a variety of ways, so there's really no right or wrong way as long as you get to what you would like to see. Uh, here we will show you a couple of methods 
so that you can try it out and see what is your best way of getting to uh, the visual you have in mind. The first way we will explore is by using the show me menu to the right. Right now you'll notice that everything is grayed out. When you hover over the types of visualizations, at the bottom it will tell you uh, how many dimensions or how many measures it needs in order to create uh, this particular visualization. So for example, if we hover over the geospatial field map, um, you'll notice that you need at least one geospatial dimension, which makes sense because you need um, uh, some field to dictate, you know, which country or which state, uh, etc., so that um, they know which area to fill. To use this show me menu, uh, you can select the fields that you are interested. And this is very good for you know, when you don't really have a visualization in mind, but you just want to explore the data. So for example, I want to look at sales by region, but also by the categories of goods. So I can select multiple dimensions and measures by holding down the control key. Uh, here you can see the visuals that are available to me are now colored, and I can select them. I can uh, very quickly uh, flip through the types of visualizations to see you know, what is more interesting and maybe what is easier in telling the story that I want to tell. Now if I had uh, removed my cursor from the show me menu, you will notice that there is a blue box around one visualization and that is uh, through Tableau's algorithms and the types of uh, fields you've selected, uh, its suggestion on what is the best type of visualization to use. And you'll notice that uh, essentially what Tableau has done is taken the fields of interest and put them into the uh, shelves uh, as well as the cards area and change the marks area as we uh, move into different visualizations. So for example, I will click on the pie chart and you will notice that the marks will change and it will no longer be a bar. Um, and uh, these cuts horizontally will likely change as well. So here you can see uh, it's changed itself into a, a pie. We are now coloring based on the categories of goods. Uh, so you can see the color scheme here as well. My angle and size of the pie is really on the sales, and how big my pie is is also based on sales. What that means is that rather than clicking on the show me menu, you can create your own visualizations through a combination of using the shelves, marks, cards, and when uh, we take a look at uh, filters and pages that will um, also help you uh, create uh, more customized views. So let's look at um, what it looks like when we um, drag the fields into the shelves and the marks and the plotting area rather than um, using a show me menu. To clear the worksheet, you can simply uh, click this clear sheet button or use alt shift backspace to clear the area. Another very important feature of Tableau is that you actually have endless undos. And that is important because it really allows you to play with the data and explore and look for the views that uh, are most intriguing without you know, being worried that you will miss, uh, you won't be able to go back to a prior view that you like. Now let's clear the sheet. Now that we've looked at how to create data visualizations with the show me menu, uh, let's take a look at uh, the other ways that you can create visualizations, which is namely using the shelves, the plotting area, the cards, and marker dropdown. You can create visualizations by uh, using these plotting areas uh, without using the show me menu. So I could select sales uh, by the region which is what we looked at at the very beginning. 
And you'll notice that right now it's on numbers. That is because my sum of sales has been uh, dropped into the text card by Tableau automatically. But if I didn't want that, I could uh, instead uh, drag it and put it into size. Now what that will do is uh, it will size my regions based on what marker is active as well as um, uh, what the sum of the sales by region is. So when I drop it in there, you'll notice that my marker went into a, a square, which is why it is uh, showing up here as squares. If I wanted a bar chart, however, I could just click and change it into a bar. And the plotting area, um, you can change by uh, dragging, or you can uh, fit to width, fit to height, entire view, etc. So to recreate the visual that we made uh, before, you can take the category and drop it into color, and it will then uh, cut up your bar charts uh, based on the category. So further customization and uh, formatting can be done. Uh, some very quick examples is by left-clicking your cards. By uh, clicking into these, it'll show you the different options that you have. So for example, in color, you can change the color scheme, assign a different palette, or change transparency, which becomes important when you're dealing with scatter plots and you might want to see where your dots are clustering and where they're on top of each other so you can gauge you know, concentration, um, borders, etc. The size really refers back to the marker. So right now we're on bar. So if I change the size, it'll change the size of the bar. Uh, in this case, how skinny it is. Labels, you can um, drag and drop the labels that you want display. So for example, I could do sales as well as I want to show which category these colors are if I don't want to read the legend. Uh, here you can see that uh, it automatically showed only a few. Um, so if you click onto here, you can select like which ones to show. So only when selected does it show, or uh, you can select all. It doesn't show all of them because it doesn't have enough room. So if you go into entire view, you'll notice that it gets bigger. And you can uh, also uh, customize it by clicking these three dots. Um, to change the fonts uh, and maybe you don't want one on top of the other, you just want it next to each other so you can change that as well. Tool tip is really uh, again um, customizable if you left click it but when you hover over uh, a, a mark um, what it is showing as a pop-up box. Details is important uh, when you want to be able to slice your data in a specific way without actually influencing, uh, say, color. So let's do a quick example using a scatter plot. So if I clear my sheet, so for example, let's create a scatter plot using sales by region and uh, profit. So when I create the scatter plot, um, I can just move this into say my colors so I have four dots each color is a region it shows me my profit over sales but this might not be enough information if I wanted to understand what my profit and sales look like by customer uh, I would want every single dot to be a customer uh, however um, you do not want to take your customer ID and drop it into color uh, and you will get this error message. So let's say we add all members because that way you're going to get a different color per customer. At that point, when you have that many colors, it really is meaningless. So instead of doing that, um, you can take your customer ID and drop it into detail. Now um, your unit is at uh, the customer level, but every single customer is being colored by region. And while we're here, I'm just going to show you quickly um, the use of uh, the transparency. So if you hover over 
and you move it to transparent, you really see that most of your customers are kind of clustering in this region. Now to explain filters and pages fairly quickly, you can create uh, customized filters for uh, your users to make it a little bit easier on them. So for example, if I have regional managers, I might create a filter by region. Uh, you will get this menu to help you select what are the different options. In this case, we just want to show the four that are available in the data. So we can click apply and okay. Uh, by right clicking and hitting the show filter, uh, you'll display this uh, menu so folks can select their own region and, and do analysis that way. To explain pages very quickly, uh, essentially, if you have one visualization that say changes over time, or uh, a static view that you want to cut in a different way and show almost like a video, you can do that with pages. So if I want to um, look at this exact view for every single year that I've been in business by the order date, I can drag order date into pages. And here you will uh, get a little bit of a control menu and you will be able to see right now we're on 2011. This is what my customer base looks like. And you can play, click play and see this number change. Uh, and so every time it change, it means my view is reflecting that particular year. Thank you everyone for listening and hope this was helpful. I look forward to seeing you in our next videos about uh, calculated fields and parameter controls.